OK, SIP is a signaling protocol that sets up communication sessions over an IP network with user agents and a whole bunch of servers and gateways. But isn't it just a different way of doing what we've always done with traditional telephony? No, it's far more than that. So much that most carriers now, most telephone service providers or TSPs have already switched to SIP in the core of their networks. Keeping SS7 and regular POTS phones over the last mile, but switching to SIP for core processing and routing through the network. So what's driven this change? Why has SIP become so widely adopted? There are two real reasons, flexibility and cost. Back in the 90s, when I came to telecoms, it was the equipment vendors that called the shots. The TSPs depended completely on the vendor's hardware for their service. Hardware that A, cost an absolute fortune, and B, would typically be part of a complete proprietary solution, meaning that TSPs became locked to one supplier. Creating enhancements, dare I say features, was a huge and expensive process, requiring equipment redesign, hardware manufacture, and physical distribution and installation throughout the network. No wonder telecoms were slow to progress. Enhancements just took too long and cost too much. Cool waiting, for example, took a whole year to develop and roll out. New services were still very much in the hands of the vendors. They ran on vendor equipment, and only the vendors had the means to create them. True, some did offer TAPIs, Telephone Application Programming Interfaces, through which third parties could build services. In fact, the company I worked for back then hoped to use such an API to create a new telephony product. That is, until we discovered the $40,000 price tag just to access the API, never mind the cost of development hardware. The amount of effort and investment needed put feature and service creation pretty much out of reach for all but the biggest of players. There must be a better way, and of course there is. Around the same time, the Internet Protocol IP was well and truly established as the de facto mechanism for data exchange over a network. Could IP be used for telephony? It could. In fact, Henning Schulstrein, a university professor, had an idea. He devised a protocol that described a set of components and interactions to facilitate communications over IP. The Session Initiation Protocol was born. It offered a compelling alternative. For a start, SIP is implemented through software, software that runs on generic servers rather than proprietary dedicated telecoms equipment, servers that cost just a fraction of the price of their legacy counterparts, immediately a huge cost saving. A software approach also means easy upgrade and easy changes. Modify the code, download and run on the server, and the system's upgraded. No more lengthy cycles of hardware design and manufacture, another huge cost saving. SIP is an open protocol. It's freely available to all. Anyone with an interest and ability to build software can use it to create compatible communications products and services. No more $40,000 price tag just to access the API. Compared to legacy protocols, SIP is simple, easy to learn, understand and exploit. I remember delivering a SIP application developer course where throughout the session one of the guys couldn't help but repeatedly express amazement as he tapped his keys. Incredible. Unbelievable, he'd mutter under his breath. Previously, even the simplest of new features need special equipment and take months if not years to develop, he said in his Flemish accent. Yet here, simply with our laptops and a SIP API, we code some lines, make a call, and immediately see the effect. We'll build features in days rather than years. And he was right. SIP offers great flexibility. Part of its flexibility is its extensibility. Today there are over a hundred SIP extensions that build on top of SIP to further define behaviors and relationships needed for exciting new services. And more will surely come. They're open and freely available for implementation by any interested party. 
Using IP, it's easy to integrate SIP with other technologies, embedding communications in everyday desktop and mobile applications, for example, adding web interfaces, and exploiting news feeds and the like, all things that enhance the communications offering. Now, SIP doesn't try to be everything to everyone. It does what it does, working alongside existing technologies and protocols, UDP, TCP, TLS, SDP, and so on. It's also independent of the underlying media. Unlike the old world, there's no dependency on particular codecs. Any codec can be used, and as new codecs emerge, they can be added in with no special effort or system upgrade. Cool. So, why SIP? Isn't it just a different way of doing what we've always done with traditional telephony? No, it's far more. SIP has moved telecoms out of the control of the equipment vendors and into the hands of the broader community, including the enterprise and internet service providers. Being software-based, independent of special hardware and therefore significantly cheaper, and being simple, open, accessible, extensible, and therefore flexible, SIP is taking communications and communication services to a whole new level, saving money and expanding possibilities.